good morning students so here today we'll discuss the block diagram of a digital lcr meter okay before we start with this we already know that in previous classes we discussed about uh, the block diagram of electronic counter and how it can be used for the measurement of uh, or it can be used in the uh, totalizing mode in the time interval mode or in the ratio mode okay or in the frequency measurement mode how it can be used plus we also discussed about the block diagram of the digital multimeter okay how it will be there okay now today we will discuss about what the block diagram of the digital lcr meter so you all already knowing that about uh, digital lcr meter it is used for the measurement of the components uh, that is your l that is inductor c capacitor and r the register okay it is used for the measurement of inductance capacitance and resistance okay then here how it can be started or how it is going to work is first which component to be measured okay or which parameter to be measured it is selected by the s three way switch okay or we also call it as the lcr function switch okay which is there in the s bottom right side okay uh, next to the range switch it is there that is the lcr function switch which is used for the selection of the desired function okay and what is the principle used or the working principle used here in case of the lcr meter is it is the principle which is used is to measure the voltage across the component okay to measure the voltage across the component under test plus the current passing through the component under test okay whenever the test signal is given to the component okay the basic principle involved here is measurement of voltage across the component under test and current passing through the component under test whenever the test signal is applied across the component under test through the 1 kilohertz oscillator okay so this whatever the combination of your uh, processed voltage okay measured voltage plus the current uh, flowing across the component under test both are given to the digital integrator and that digital integrator finally enables the your output display unit okay which is going to display the directly value of the test component okay then in detail if you want to see this working of this one here the range which is automatically select going to range the range value okay and one kilohertz oscillator block is there on top it is used for what selection of the test signal or applying the test signal means the component under test is there for that first we need to apply the test signal okay so that test signal is generated by an oscillator and usually it is going to generate the test signal which is having the test frequency of 1 kilohertz okay and whose gain will be controlled by automatically by the automatic gain control block all we also call it as the agc block okay then this whatever the test signal is there it is applied to the s source register rs okay that is your rs is there now up next to the 1 kilo oscillator so that test signal is applied to the component under test through the s source register rs okay then once you apply that test signal through the rs across the component under test then your signal current is going to flow through the current to voltage converter the signal current or the current which is flowing across the component under test starts flowing across the current to voltage converter so current to voltage converter is nothing but it is actually an operational amplifier or it is also called as a in short it is called as the op amp okay with the range register rg okay you can see that next to component under test there is one register is there that is nothing but rg okay so rg is called as the range register which is usually connected in feedback path towards the s your operational amplifier or which is also called as the current to voltage converter okay so this op amp is going to drive the junction of the component okay so whatever the component under test will be there no near that one a junction will be formed so that junction okay will be drived by this operational amplifier okay then it is going to connect the rs to the virtual ground okay whatever your uh, rs value is there or source register it is connected to the virtual ground hence whatever the value of rg is there it is going to not change the value of the current through the 
component as rs is connected to the virtual ground because of which the whatever the current which is flowing across the component will not be changed by the presence of the rg value okay or we also call it as the range register so the presence of range register is not going to change the value of the current which is flowing through the component under test okay so this whatever the signal current or the current which is flowing across the component under test is going to develop the voltage e2 okay which is proportional to the current through the component okay so here two voltages will be developed first one is whenever you are applying a signal okay when you are applying a test signal under that condition a voltage will be developed that voltage is proportional to the e1 will be there that is proportional to the voltage okay because that e1 voltage which is there next to the rs it is proportional to the voltage okay because that uh, uh, voltage is generated because of the whatever the voltage you are applying across the component under test similarly e2 is generated because of the current which is flowing across the component under test hence we can say here the e1 voltage is directly proportional to the voltage and e2 voltage is directly proportional to the current okay and these are related to the measurement of capacitance and inductance okay these whatever the e1 and e2 are there no these are related to the measurement of capacitance and inductance so how these are related are first one is the capacitance value is inversely proportional to voltage okay c is inversely proportional to voltage or c is proportional to e2 by e1 okay c is proportional to e2 by e1 similarly inductance is inversely proportional to current or it is proportional to e1 divided by e2 okay so this ratio is very very important okay then here in the range switch there are two resistance values are there one is the rs and another one is the rr so how the values of rs and rr are selected okay so that is also very important point here so the values of rs and rr are selected based on what is the impedance value of unknown component means based on the impedance value of the either capacitance or inductance the value of the rs and rr are selected okay so how it will be there you can see suppose if you want to measure inductance then for the measurement of inductance the component impedance is very low okay or the impedance of inductance is very low hence under such condition the value of rs is chosen is very higher okay so whenever you are choosing the very high value of rs that is going to provide the constant current drive to the component okay it is going to provide the constant current drive to the component under test okay then similarly when you are going to measure the capacitance under that condition the impedance of capacitance is very high hence the value of rs chosen is very low and this is going to provide a constant voltage drive to the test component okay remember yes the value of rs what is the value of rs you are taken that is very important for the measurement of impedance the value of rs is high uh, inductance and for the measurement of capacitance rs value is very low okay then whatever the voltage e1 is there okay the e1 voltage is applied to the differential amplifier okay e1 is applied to the differential amplifier similarly the e1 is also applied to the s control switch okay e1 is other, that is your whatever the output of differential amplifier is there no that is also given to the control switch okay so it means what the control switch consists of two inputs one is your voltage e1 and another one is the voltage e2 okay then it is going to compare means what is the voltage is there whether e1 is greater than e2 or e2 is greater than e1 okay so these two condition is going to compare then after that comparing whichever the greater voltage is there out of the e1 and e2 the greater voltage is given to the bottom most block which is there called as the average voltage detector or in short is called as the avd okay so the greater voltage is given to the avd and similarly the lesser voltage or the smaller voltage is given to the s yes, phase sensitive selector which is there in the middle or it is also called as the pss okay then whatever the greater voltage you are applying to your average voltage detector no that is also given to the 
another block called as the phase locked loop okay or in short we call it as the pll and it is which in turn is given to the voltage controlled oscillator or it is called in short it is called as the vco okay then what is the job of your uh, phase lock loop and uh, voltage controlled oscillator is here these two together are going to generate the clock signals okay which will be there in phase with the reference signal whatever the reference test signal you are given no that is 1 kilo suppose you are taken no means these two blocks are going to generate the clock signal which is having the frequency of 1 kilohertz okay so phase lock loop and voltage controlled oscillator as used for the generation of the clock signals which will be there in phase with the reference signal or the test signal here in our case it will be having the frequency of 1 kilohertz okay and the clock signal is divided into two phase shifted values either it may be a 90 degree phase shifted or it may be the 270 degree phase shifted okay which will be there in phase with your input signal or the test signal either in the 90 degree or with the 270 degree okay then these phase shifted signals clock signals through the four phase generator are given to the phase sensitive selector or we also call it as the phase sensitive detector okay in short we call it as the pss and avd okay then the outputs of pss that is the phase sensitive selector and the output of avd that is average voltage detector are given to the digital integrator unit okay you know that uh, from the control switch greater voltage is given to average voltage detector and lesser voltage is given to the phase sensitive selector okay plus another input for the phase sensitive selector is what it is the clock signal okay so by taking that one the output of your pss and the output of avd both are given to the digital integrator now what is the job of the digital integrator is digital integrator is going to produce steadily changing output voltage with respect to the constant input voltage i'll repeat again digital integrator is going to produce steadily changing output voltage with respect to the constant input voltage and the output of digital integrator is given to the digital display unit which usually consists of the four digit led display will be there with an automatic decimal point will be there and whatever the range selection will be there that will be having the fully automatic uh, range selection will be there okay and it will be having uh, an accuracy of uh, plus or minus 0 0.10 to 0 0.15 okay that much uh, accuracy it will be having fine so this is how an LCR meter is going to work or this is also called as a block diagram of a LCR meter okay so I'll tell again so here first by using the LCR function switch which parameter to be measured is selected okay either inductor or capacitor which value to be uh, measured is going to be selected then by using a 1 kilohertz oscillator a test signal will be generated with the automatic gain control and that test signal is given to the component under test through the register rs okay so through the rs whenever that uh, test signal is given to the component under test a voltage will be generated or voltage will be developed that is called as the e1 that e1 is proportional to the applied voltage okay e1 is proportional to voltage then after that one the current start flowing through the component under test we call it as the signal current okay so that signal current is applied to the current to voltage converter which is nothing but essential operational amplifier okay and here whatever the e1 value is there it is connected to the virtual ground hence the presence of rg okay that rg is not going to change the value of the current okay so the current is converted into voltage by the that current to voltage converter and that whatever output is generated is a e2 okay another voltage because when you apply the voltage e1 will be generated now because the flow of the current another voltage is generated that is e2 then the value of e2 is proportional to the current okay then here by taking these values of voltage and current and given to the digital integrator block yes the measurement of the whatever the parameter will be done okay so here when i say the metric mathematically when i am expressing the voltage e1 is proportional to voltage and e2 is proportional to the current or in terms of the measurement of capacitance and inductance capacitance is directly or it is indirectly proportional to voltage or it is proportional to e2 by e1 
Similarly, inductance is propo indirectly proportional to current or it is proportional to E1 by E2. Okay. Then what is the value of RS and RR are selected is this based on the whatever the impedance of unknown component will be there. Okay. For the measurement of as I said inductance, the component impedance will be very low. Hence, the RS value chosen will be very high and this is going to provide the constant current drive to the component under test. Similarly, when you are going to measure the capacitance under that condition, the component impedance will be very high. Hence, the RS value chosen will be very less. It is going to provide the constant voltage drive to the component under test. Okay. Then the voltage E1 is applied to the differential amplifier and plus it is also applied to the control switch and another input for the control switch is E2. Okay. So control switch is going to compare both the voltages. The greater voltage is given to average voltage detector and lesser voltage is given to the phase sensitive selector or PSS. Okay. Then plus the greater voltage is also given to phase lock loop and VCO or the voltage controlled oscillator which is used for the generation of the clock signal with respect to the reference signal. So here we are giving the 1 kilohertz oscillator signal means the clock signal also will be having the frequency of 1 kilohertz. Okay. And the output of that uh, whatever the clock signal is there it will be phase shifted by either 90 degree or 270 degree phase shifted signal. It is given to the PSS through the four phase generator. Then the output of PSS and AVD are given to the digital integrator. Okay, digital integrator is going to provide the steady state uh, changing output with respect to the constant input. Then the output of digital integrator is given to the digital display unit, which is going to display the, which is having usually the four digit LED display will be there with automatic decimal point, which is going to display the whatever the component uh, value under test. Okay, which the component will be there. That value is going to be displayed on the display unit. Okay. So this is how the LCR meter is going to work or this is how the block diagram of digital LCR meter can be explained. Okay. I hope you have understood fine. In the next class, we will see the next concepts. Okay. Thank you.